reception and dissection this week uh, within the, in the um, Ospreys camp? Yeah, it's been a, uh, yeah, it was a, a pretty tough start to the week, to be fair, and uh, there has been a lot of soul searching and a lot of reflecting and a lot of learning. And uh, pleased to say that we've come through the other side of it. The sun rose on Sunday morning and, uh, you know, we, uh, we got back into our work. So what changes then this week? Um, I think again, just the realization that um, every week, you know, is a step up, and we've got to make sure that from, you know, from uh, every player in the squad and coach and everybody, that we've got to be across our detail, and uh, we've got to make sure that we take the learnings from training and execute on the week on the weekends and the games. And clearly, against Connaught, we didn't do that. Um, so again, that's just been a, a bit of a realization and a kick in the ass, really. You had some of the World Cup players in the in the squad last weekend. Yeah. More going to appear this weekend. I hope so. Yeah. The likes of what Dan Elliott, Dan Bigger. Yeah. Again, we'll just have to wait and see. Obviously, uh, there's a few boys coming back. Um, some guys are still away, so um, we'll just see how they roll in. Who's not going to be part of it? Then? Don't know at this stage. And in, in, are they all quite keen to get back. Into Every time they come here and pull a jersey on, uh, they love being a part of it and they're dying to, to play for the Ospreys. And that would make a difference within the squad that the uh, players are perhaps you know, thinking that they're having to fight for their place more? Yeah, look, all of those sorts of, uh, you know, having those guys back in your, in your squad brings a um, certain amount of competitive uh, nature. Um, I think the quality of these players um, is going to bring out the best in everyone. So, yeah, I, I would, I'm hoping that that's what's going to happen here. Yeah. But you're also going to Glasgow. Well, uh, yeah, do you know that the, are they are bringing them back, are they? I, I, they've got them back in the squad, I don't know. Oh, okay, right. So, again, they're in a similar situation to us, aren't they? So, look, we again, you know, we can get carried away and start looking too far forward and uh, worrying too much about our opposition, but quite clearly from their performance on uh, Saturday afternoon, it's, it's pretty evident that we've got a lot of our own work to tidy up, and so that's what we've been focusing on this week. So... Um, yep, Glasgow are a hell of a side and your team you've got to pay a lot of respect to but also um, we've got a few things that we've got to tidy up and get ourselves ready. Um, news today about Justin Tipperick being um, his try against Ireland in the Manly Stadium uh, as a warm-up game has been nominated for World Rugby Try of the Year. Great. Just um, a word on that and I don't know if you can remember it or his sort of contribution to um, the country. Oh, look, I think, it, you know, it's awesome for tips, isn't it? Um, he's a team man and he won't be wanting to take too much of that on. So, But uh, to be fair, we've just been working pretty hard here for the last few days, so I haven't really been able to see what's going on in the rest of the world. I'm sure he's been pleased about that. Um, obviously, news this week about um, Tony Fantau and his, um, the, the goings-on with that. Oh, sorry, I've been working. I don't know what's been going on there. What's the crack there? Well, he's not going to be moving to Bath. It's, um, it's oh, does he, he doesn't play for us, though, does he? Right, so I'm not really would too bothered. Would he be a player that would be of interest to the Ospreys? Oh, look, he left us, Steve, and the recruitment team. I'm just a simple forwards coach, so, um, you know, good luck to him, whatever. Lovely, OK. Thank you. Yeah, what, what do you need to improve then, uh, this week, then, Chris? Yeah, I think, um, you know, if you look at look at the error count uh, on, on the weekend, um, it's extraordinary for us. So first and foremost, you know, we've got to be able to hold on to the ball. And um, I think, you know, we individually we were we were poor in a lot of those areas. So there's that. And I think also too, you know, we've turned a few balls over and balls have bobbled out or we've let um, Connaught players get their feet into the back of our ruck and knock balls around. So again, hold on to the ball and then make sure we can secure position so we can start stringing phases together. Um, and I think, I think also to a big learning for this group is that I think with 30 minutes to go we were playing the scoreboard not what was in front of us and again Connaught were a good side but they presented a lot of opportunities to us as well that we didn't take and you know from a coaching team group uh, perspective once we've reviewed that and reflected it seen those pitches it's pretty disappointing but again it's just you know we've got to keep moving forward and keep growing in those spaces Is that the poorest the Ospreys have played since you arrived here? Yeah, yeah, it was crap, wasn't it? Really, it's not our standard. So again, and, and, and again, I think we all know that the fans know that. Um, you know, the sponsors all know that, and it's just not what we're about, and not good enough. You know, and again, we've like I say, it's been a hard few days, but we've reflected hard, and I think you won't see that again. Um, 
and, and again, it's just something that we've got to try and get right internally. And there's no, again, there's no need to panic. There's nothing astronomically wrong. It's just across the board, we didn't mentally prepare well enough. Um, and we just didn't execute what we'd trained. This week, can the likes of Ali Wen, can they be considered for start in positions? Um, again, I'm not sure. Well, yeah, look, it's pretty tough, right? And again, those guys have just come back in, you know, first stage back training on Tuesday. So again, we've just got to make sure that from a player centre perspective that we take the care of them first. And we've just got to see where they're at. They've had two good days of training. Um, and again, we'll see how they pull up tomorrow and with the, you know, and then we can go from there, really. With uh, Gareth Dell, is he up to speed? Is, is he being considered for a starting role? Well, look, he's in the rotation. And again, it's something that we... We talk about a lot. I mean, obviously, Dalvey was brought in for um, his experience and to cover in certain times. And unfortunately for him, um, he got injured during those periods while the boys were away. Uh, and now that they're, they're sort of backing into the rotation again, it just it, it makes selection a little bit difficult, more difficult for him, really. But you now this is a challenge for all our players. Um, Welsh boys come back in, Canadian boys, Fijian boys come back in, and everyone's got to take a step up, don't they? So again. You never say never, but um, again, it is. He's in the rotation, but it's just uh, we've just got to see what the best mix is for Glasgow. What about Yeah, he's travelling pretty well actually. Um, you know, he's got a little bit of work to do conditioning-wise. He's he's the first to put his hand up around that, but he's moving well. And uh, again, we've just got to see how he progresses over the next little while. But uh, all signs are looking good. Just going back to that Palato, I know he he doesn't play in your forwards coach. If he did become available next season, would you be interested as a region? Listen, no, that's a bigger question than I can answer, mate. Um, to be fair, and again, I'm just one part of the cog, and look, it's something that you you've got to talk to our board and talk to Steve and the recruitment committee about, really. Um, I think anybody of of his class is obviously going to be attractive, you know. So. I have a question, Mr. Mark. Yeah, Chris is on Glasgow, really. How do you assess that challenge and? Gosper's got a very poor record up there. Yeah, very poor, but over the last couple of games, we haven't been beaten by much, mate. And uh, look, we, we're going up there to give to give them a good run. Look, they, you know, they're champions for a reason of this of this league. And again, you can see that although they've come short on a couple of occasions uh, in these early rounds, they are a team that plays um, plays with a lot of vigour and a lot of directness, and they play with a lot of speed. Um, you know, even just looking at Leinster last week when they played up there, I think you, you can see that they've they've got a game they want to play, they want to move the ball, they're really direct, they take the space really quickly if you give it to them. So, you know, they, they're a big challenge. But, uh, you know, we'd like to think that, again, over the last few years, we've been able to go um, 12 rounds with them and we've been looking at no different this, this week around. Um, they do pose a challenge, but... Also, too, we've got a few things to write as well, don't we? So, um, again, we'll be looking for a lot more urgency, a lot more effort, but also, too, being a lot more clinical and accurate.